East and Sir Callum and the Snowgrove. It was mid-December on the Redcliffe and Guinea Bridge Railway, and all the engines were very excited for Christmas. There was so much more traffic on the railway around this time of year. There were extra letters to deliver with all the children sending their Christmas list to Santa. There were also presents to deliver, Christmas food to be taken to all the supermarkets in the local area, Christmas decorations of any kind of any Christmas good you could imagine. All had to be delivered to the shops of the local area, on top of all the locomotives' regular jobs. But Ethan and Sir Callum had the best job of all around this time of year. They were taking trainloads of families on steam train rides from Redcliffe up to Guineabridge Junction and back to meet Santa Claus. They loved doing this job every year and both agreed that Christmas just wouldn't be complete without these special trains. But for everyone else, the extra Christmas traffic meant they had to work harder than usual. This resulted in them getting very, very tired by the end of the day. Mr. Eric could clearly see they needed some extra help. And fast. So one cold, grey and icy morning, he went to see all of his engines in the loco yard to tell them about an engine they were getting in to help them with the even heavier than usual Christmas traffic. Good morning everybody. Now, I fully understand that the extra Christmas traffic this year is even heavier than usual and that you are all struggling to cope. So, I have so this year I have hired an engine to help us with the additional Christmas traffic. Oh no, it's not Jack, is it? I don't want him and his rude ways back, at, especially not at Christmas. Don't worry, David. It is most certainly not Jack. It is a small tender engine named Christopher. His controller says that he is very kind and helpful and that he just loves Christmas. When will Christopher be getting here, sir? Any minute now, Sir Callum, and he will be starting work with us pretty much as soon as he gets here. <coughs> Mr. Eric answered his radio. Yes? He's almost here, is he? Okay, I'll be up there as soon as I can. Over and out. Christopher is almost here, everyone. I've got to go now. And Mr. Eric walks back up the tracks towards the station. A few minutes later, Christopher came puffing into the loco yard to meet all of the engines. Hi everyone, it's great to be here. I can't wait to start work with you all. It's great to have you here, Christopher. I'm Sir Callum, and these are Ethan and Jacob. Hi, Christopher. Howdy. Very nice to meet you all. I'd better go now. The work isn't going to get itself done now, will it? Very true, Christopher. See you later, then. Christopher soon set to work. He got all of his work done quickly and was very kind and helpful to all the other engines. He was loved by many and warmly welcomed to the railway. Later on, Sir Callum met up with Ethan. But he noticed something very strange coming from Ethan's wheels, and smelt it too. Um, Ethan, I don't know if you have noticed, but there is some very thick grey smoke coming from your wheels. Also, can you smell something burning? Sir Callum, I do not know what you are talking about. I cannot see any grey smoke and cannot smell anything. Well, okay. But I'm just letting you know because I'm worried about you. I'd best be off now. Bye, Ethan. Bye, Sir Callum. And so Ethan and Sir Callum went their separate ways. The next day, Mr. Eric was waiting for Jacob and Sir Callum at Redcliffe Station. He had something very important to tell them. Hello, you two. I have come to talk to you both today because I have a very important job for you both to do on Christmas Eve. 
bring your ting up! Time to get up on your feet! Oh, I want my baby, sir. Well, Jacob, this year I have decided that we will not have a Christmas tree outside the station. Instead, we will have a snow globe with a Christmas tree inside it. And I need you and Sir Callum to go and collect it from Guinea Bridge Junction Station. Well, of course, sir. But why do you need both of us? Not only is the snow globe very heavy, it is also very unstable, so you will need to bring Colin the maintenance crane with you to load it. You will also need to bring a coach to take some workmen in to stop the snow globe from swinging around as Colin is loading it. You will also need to collect a generator from the Ridge Junction to power the lights on the snow globe as we do not have a long enough generator to reach the place where the snow globe will be placed, along with some fuel to power the generator with. Now all of that combined makes for a very heavy load. That's why I need two engines. So what do you both say? Will you do it? Of course we will, Mr. Alec. We're not going to let you down on Christmas Eve. You can count on us, sir. <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you both. Good luck on Christmas Eve, and I will see you both later. See you around. A few days later, it was Christmas Eve, and Sir Callum was waiting for Jacob so they could set out on their important task of collecting the snow globe. Hmm, now where is Jacob? I can't go without him. That is a very good question, Sir Callum. Jacob should have been here by now. Suddenly, an emergency report came through Mr. Eric's radio. Yes? Hello? Who is this? Mr. Eric, sir? This is Fireman Ben. I would like to report an incident. Oh yes, go ahead, I'm listening. You see, it's Jacob, sir. He's broken down just outside Raiden City Station. He's got a steam leak and he can't move. Oh dear. Don't worry, I'll send for Brian to take him back to Redcliffe for repairs. Looks like he won't be able to help Sir Callum with the snow globe today. Thank you for telling me anyway, over and out. What's that, sir? Has something happened to Jacob? I'm afraid so. He's got a steam leak and won't be able to help you with the snow globe. But sir, like you said, the snow globe is very heavy and I can't pull it on my own. So if Jacob is out of service, then you can help me with it now. Don't worry, Sir Callum. I'll find someone else to help you. Just then, Ethan came into the station with one of the railway Santa specials. Ah, that's it. Ethan, can I ask you a favour? But of course, sir. What is it? You see, Ethan, Jacob was meant to be helping out Sir Callum with a snow globe, but he's broken down and cannot pull the train. Sir Callum can't pull the train on his own, as it is very heavy. So could you please do it for Jacob? Okay then, Mr. Eric, but what about the Santa specials? Oh, no need to worry about that, Ethan. I'll ask Dennis to take them for the rest of the day. Alright then, Mr. Eric. I'm ready when Sir Callum is ready. Thank you, Ethan. I will see you both when you get back in time for the Christmas party. Sir Callum was very pleased to have Ethan helping him out, but secretly he was a little worried too. He had remembered what he had seen coming out of Ethan's wheels a few days before, and had a very horrible feeling that this trip was not going to be easy. A few minutes later, Brian brought them their train so they could set out on their very important job. Brian uncoupled and moved backwards so that Ethan and Sir Callum could couple up to it. Once they were coupled on, Brian moved alongside them and the two engines were ready to begin their journey. The rails are very icy today, so you both be careful out there with your heavy train today. Thank you for that kind advice, Brian. <laughs> well, at least some engines on this railway appreciate my advice, not like that mean old Jack. 
Yeah, I know what you mean. See you later now, Brian. And with that, Sir Callo and Ethan headed off on their journey up to Guinea Bridge Junction. Their journey started out smoothly, but then, a few miles outside Redcliffe, they were stopped by a man waving a red baton. Hello there. What's the problem? Sorry, Ethan. The points are frozen. I understand that you've been assigned to run to Guinea Junction via Raiden City, but you can't because the points are stuck like this. Oh. Oh dear. Well, can't we just run down the other line to Guinea Bridge Junction? Hmm, I suppose so. But I'll have to inform Mr. Eric. That's fine by us. We'll be off now. Thank you and see you later. See you later, Ethan. Then the two continued on their journey for the snow globe. For a while, their journey was uneventful, but unfortunately, this didn't last. They were soon stopped by a pile of snow that had blown out across the tracks and blocked them. Ethan and Sir Callum couldn't get through. Oh, what the hell do we do now? We'll never be able to move this lot out of the way on, uh, on our own. We might get stuck. Yep, this is a very awkward situation indeed. Relax, you two. I'll get you both out of here. I've got a snow shovel and a tea mug, so we should be on our way in no time. Ethan and Sir Cal were very happy about this, but at the same time, they were still worried about running late and not being able to get back to Redcliffe in time for the Christmas party. Meanwhile, Christopher met up with Brian while he was taking Jacob back to Redcliffe. Hi Brian, I heard that Ethan and Sir Callum have gone to pick up a snow globe for the Christmas party tonight. How do you think they are getting on? Oh, I'm sure they are getting on just fine, Christopher. Back at the junction, Conductor Elliot had finally managed to clear the snow off of the tracks and Ethan and Sir Callum were ready to depart again. However, as a result of the snowdrift, they were now running 40 minutes behind schedule. Tickets, please, tickets. Well, you're coming. They pounded down the line, trying to make up for lost time. Hurrying, though, was making them use up a lot of water, and they soon began to feel dehydrated. Don't worry, you two. We'll soon be at Guinea Bridge Junction. Then, while the workers are helping Colin load the snow globe, I'll give you both a nice long drink. Then he looked at Sir Callum's water gauge and muttered, I hope. Ethan and Sir Callum continued to speed on down the tracks towards Guinea Bridge Junction. Luckily, they both had just enough water in their tanks to make it to Guinea Bridge Junction Station, and they stopped in Platform 1, tired but triumphant. We stay on track though sometimes, we digress, but that can only happen on the Polar Express! That's the sound of a breathing! The snow globe, the generator, and the fuel were all there waiting to be loaded. And while the workmen helped Colin with the snow globe, Conductor Elliot went to fill Ethan and Sir Callum's water tanks. Right then, you two, let's give you both a drink. And he turned the valve to let the water into Sir Callum's tanks. But then, there was a strange groaning noise, and hardly any water came. Oh dear, the pipes in the tank must be frozen. How on earth are we going to get to the water into the pipes if the pipes are frozen? Keep calm, you two. I'll do everything I can to get as much water into your tanks as I can. Conductor Elliot tried his best. Then Sir Callum noticed something funny. Hmm, there's that burning smell again. 
Sir Callum, what are you talking about? I cannot smell anything. Meanwhile, Brian had finally made it back to Redcliffe with Jacob, and a mechanic was there waiting to fix his steam leak. Mr. Oak was about to test the Christmas lights on the station. Right! Time to test the Christmas lights! The Polar Express! Are you sure, sir? Do you even know if they're going to work? Oh yes, Brian, I know what I'm doing. Mr. Eric then pressed the on switch, but then there was an electronic noise that didn't sound healthy. And then a huge explosion. Mr. Eric was flung back because of such force that his neck hurt and he landed on his back. Oh my goodness, are you okay, sir? Merry Christmas, Mummy! Um, I'll take that as a no, then. Don't worry, Brian. I used to be a doctor, you know. All Mr. Eric will need is several strong coffees, a whack on the head, and at least two hours of sleep, and he should be fine when the Christmas party happens tonight. Okay, then, if you say so. Back at Guinea Bridge Junction, the snow globe and everything else have been loaded and Ethan and Sir Callum were ready to go. However, although Conductor Elliot had tried to get as much water into their tanks as possible, it still wasn't much. Well, you two, that'll have to do, I'm afraid. I just hope you both have enough water to get back home. I hope so too. The sooner we get back home, the sooner the Christmas party can start. Yep. I just want to go home now. And Ethan and Sir Callum headed off back off to Redcliffe. The first few miles of their return journey were uneventful, but that didn't last long. They soon reached the Bexgate flyover. They struggled up the hill with their heavy load and low water levels, but after much straining, they finally reached the top. But then, as they started to break for the descent... Ethan's brakes suddenly burst into flames and began burning up. Ethan lost control and started racing down the hill. So Callum could not slow the train down on his own. The momentum was just too much for one set of brakes. The train roared down the line and the pair were horrified. Meanwhile, Christopher was resting nearby the rolling stock yard. He noticed the runaway train out of the corner of his eye, and he knew just what to do. He started running backwards after the runaway train in an attempt to stop it. <laughs> Remain calm, you two. I'm going to try to cover up to the back of your train and try to slow the both of you down. Hurry, Christopher! We're only about five miles away from Redcliffe, and if we come in too fast, we might crash off the tracks at the sharp curve just after the station. Then the Christmas party will be ruined! Don't worry, Ethan. I'm using my own brakes. It's slowing us down, but not enough. So hopefully with Christopher's help, we should be able to slow the train down in time before we reach the station. Conductor Elliot was also trying to help. He was standing on Ethan's running plate trying to throw a container of water over Ethan's brakes so he could extinguish them and slow Ethan down. The train swayed and lurched, and Christopher was still in pursuit. Couple me up! Couple me up! I need to slow Ethan and Sir Callum down! Uh, right. The worker climbed onto Colin's rear coupling and fastened a chain onto it. Then he bravely jumped onto Christopher's coupling and fastened the other end of the chain onto it before jumping into Christopher's tender. Christopher braked as hard as he could. But would it be enough to stop even them, Sir Callum? Meanwhile, a few miles up the line, a few of the engines were already at Redcliffe Station. Mr. Eric was still recovering from his little incident with the electrics. 
and the mechanic was busy fixing Jacob's steam leak. David was getting a little bit worried. He was wondering where Ethan and Sir Callum were with the snow globe. Oh, where are Ethan and Sir Callum? The sooner the snow globe gets here, the sooner we can start the Christmas party. Don't worry, David. I'm sure they'll be here soon enough. I really hope they will be. I really want to see this snow globe. Suddenly, everyone heard a long and loud whistle. Oh no, I can see them, but they seem to be coming in way too fast. Get out of the way, everybody! Wait, what? Oh no, Ethan, Sir Callum, please stop! Luckily, the train was now travelling slow enough for Conductor Elliot to throw the water under Ethan's wheels. This extinguished his brakes. With both Ethan and Sir Callum's help using their own brakes, they both managed to slow the train down and eventually bring Ethan to a stop. Ethan was very relieved to have finally stopped. Mr. Eric, on the other hand, was very confused about what just happened. Ethan! Sir Callum! What in the blazes just happened? Why did you both come into the station so fast? Oh, it's a very long story, sir. Then Sir Callum told Mr. Eric all about what had happened on their journey that day. Mr. Eric only had to hear Sir Callum's story once to be truly amazed by it. Well, in that case, we must be very grateful for two very special people. Christopher and Elliot, your brave and selfless actions today were nothing more than heroic. Therefore, I hereby declare you both to be the guests of honour at tonight's Christmas party. All the engines whistled and honked in cheers. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm always happy to help others in need. That's very good of you, Christopher. Now come along, everybody. We've still got a lot to do before the Christmas party tonight. And everyone agreed. The snow globe was soon unloaded and put up in the right place. The generator was then hooked up and filled with fuel. Then Brian took the empty wagons and Colin the maintenance crane back to the rolling stockyard, while Sir Callum shunted Ethan over there, where the same mechanic who had fixed Jacob's steam leak was waiting to inspect Ethan's brakes. After a few minutes of looking under Ethan's wheels, he soon found the cause of them igniting. Ethan, your brake pads have worn down so much that they got really hot and eventually caught fire. As a result, they have completely melted. We do not have any spare brake pads at the moment, as our supplier has ceased operation for the year. It is unsafe for you to run without brake pads, so I'm afraid you will have to be placed out of service until the new year, when our supplier reopens. Oh, okay, I understand. Never mind, Ethan. The Christmas party is about to start. I'll take you up to the station for it. Okay then, Sir Callum. This made Ethan feel a little bit better, but he was still sad about not being able to work for the rest of the year. So the pair headed on up to Redcliffe Station for the Christmas party. Come on, Brian. The Christmas party is about to start. Oh, okay then. I'm right behind you. So Brian followed the pair up to the station for the party. One, two, three. Suddenly, all the lights came on, and the station and snow glow looked amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. O was speaking through a microphone. Before we all get to indulge in this wonderful Christmas party, we have some people to thank. I would first like to say thank you to our wonderful station master, Carl, over here, who helped me recover from a nasty shock I had after an incident with some electrics. He used to be a doctor, you know, and if it hadn't been for him, I probably wouldn't be speaking to you all right now. 
The next person I'd like to thank is this wonderful workman over here, who risked his life jumping from one train coupling to another while attempting to stop a runaway train. I'd also like to thank Elliot over here, who also risked his life trying to put out a fire on the same runaway train. But I think the biggest thank you of all would definitely have to go to Christopher over there. He was the one who actually stopped the runaway train, and if it hadn't been for them, that lovely snow globe over there would probably have been damaged beyond repair. So yeah, thank you to all these people, and thank you all for coming. Merry Christmas to all of you, and enjoy the party. Everyone cheered, and the party began. The party was a great success that night. Everyone enjoyed singing Christmas songs, and dancing, and giving presents to each other, and all in all, having a very Merry Christmas. That night in the loco yard, long after the party was over, Mr. Eric came to see everybody. Hello everyone, I just came down here to thank you all for your hard work over the past month or so. Tomorrow is Christmas Day, and there are no trains running all day, so you all deserve some rest. Station Master Carl will be here in the morning to open all of your presents for you. I'm going home now for a good night's sleep before Christmas Day. I won't be here tomorrow, so see you all on Boxing Day everybody. Merry Christmas to all of you, and to all of you, a good night. Then Mr. Eric walked back up the tracks and headed home. Hey, uh, Christopher, thank you for saving me and Sir Callum today. You were very brave. Oh, that's all right, Ethan. I'm always happy to help anyone. That's very kind of you, Christopher. Good night now and Merry Christmas. Good night and Merry Christmas to you too, Ethan. And with that, Christopher, Ethan, and everyone else fell fast asleep. Merry Christmas! The next day was Christmas Day, and Carl had come to open everyone's presents. I couldn't possibly tell you all, absolutely everyone, what everyone got, so here are a few examples. Robert got a multilingual dictionary. Freddy got a stuffed penguin that he now keeps in his cab as a lucky charm. Peter got a box of jokes that are so bad they're funny. David got a vinyl record of ACDC's Back in Black. Vitesse got a ceramic croissant that he now uses for decoration in his buffet car. Jacob got a VHS copy of Toy Story, his favourite Disney movie. Sir Callum got a, a VHS copy of his favourite TV show, Mr. Bean. And what did Ethan get? Of course, he got some new brake pads. Thank you, Santa. Now I can run before the new year after all. That's great, Ethan. Santa got me this nice book about the history of Christmas. That's very nice, Christopher. Wait a second. What's that in your tender? What's what in my tender? I'll go and have a look. Oh, it's a letter. Is it? Please open it and read it out to me. All right, all right. Um, let's see now. Dear Christopher, I'd just like to congratulate you on saving Ethan and Sir Callum. Your actions were very brave and heroic. You have been a very good boy this year. I hope you liked the book on the history of Christmas I gave you. Warm regards, Santa Claus. Oh, that's so nice of him to leave a letter just for me. Indeed it is, Christopher, and what a great Christmas this is. Well said, Ethan. Merry Christmas, Ethan. Merry Christmas, everybody.
Bum 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 train lover sixteen.